Have you heard? There are the people of the north, descendants of those who came from the marshy soil of the woods, fed by nettles and old tales of oaks, ice, and drums. The people that follow the course of the sun on a map of hope and fear. Have you heard of the northerners who still go out to the woods to pick the herbs that heal your cough? collect the right mushrooms for a hearty soup in the pale light of the early morning dawn, of people who still teach their children species of trees and when to tap their sap. I saw them, dressed in heavy linen clothes and tatters, some dressed as birds, others as beasts. They danced in circles, faster and faster, around the bonfire chasing away the winter ghosts and welcoming the sun, the new beginning. I saw them tending to their gardens with pride on their faces, planting their food with dirty hands, even though the grocery shop is just around the corner. And then there comes the longest day, when life itself bursts in bloom, pulp dripping with juice, swaying poppy fields, hair swirling in the air with illusions of endless lightness of the sun-filled days. The shortest night, with children dreaming safe and sound of strawberries and milk, when, shrouded by trees, the blossoms of the fern leaves want to be found by mischievous young lovers. And what about the moon? Are they still looking at the moon? That pale face, holding the power to make our crops grow and move the gigantic masses of water in our seas. Back then, People would not have dared to keep their eyes from the moon, especially not on hot nights, still brimming with the electricity of the day, as these were the nights when the wild hunt gathered in the blazing sky. Unsettled ghosts, armed in iron, seeking for a human sacrifice to grant them peace. Stories told in front of the fireplace, to keep the children wide-eyed and wondering. Stories that help them weave themselves into a world to which they belong. A world that made sense to them. In their world, nature was not blind matter. It was dignified life, gleaming upon them with old knowing eyes. They knew each other, made compromises and sought redemption. Of course, these times are over. We are modern, part of a world that lives in the fast lane. We don't want to abandon the comforts we've acquired. And yet, I know some who are seeking for contact with the raw and the real. The old traditions speak to something very old and hidden deep inside of them. They want to relearn how to notice all the stories being told around them and how to feel grounded in these accelerating times. Back then, living in tribes, the people of the north might have considered it the biggest luck to find any privacy in the big clan houses. Nowadays, many endure an isolated life, brooding whether they are the consumers or the consumed. We have gone too far, leaving enormous trouble for humans and nature in our wake. However, instead of going back in time to a romanticized past or forwards to apocalyptic fantasies, let's take it all in and connect the dots. We have to be like the third son in the fairy tales, curious, creative and filled with values that carry him through life. To explore this relationship between humans and nature, six artists are going on a journey through the north documenting their findings along the way. We will all walk on northern routes, 